Hello YouTube and welcome to Danielle's Denture Diaries. I am Danielle and today we will be doing another segment of my aftercare series. In this video we are going to be discussing eating. So I'm going to be very vague in this video. The reason being there are so many factors that can come into play when it comes to eating. Whether it is your um, point in time of healing, the kind of adhesives that you are using, as well as what kinds of foods that you are eating. So in this video, I will start with a couple basics that um, I think are great ways to at least start. So the first thing is to accept the fact that eating is going to happen differently for everybody. Um, if anyone who has had a child or children knows, there is no manual on teaching a child how to eat. It's very different for every child. It's very different for every newborn baby who is getting off of formula or milk, and they are learning to eat solid foods again, or for the first time ever, I guess. <laughs> um, so in our instance, the first thing is going to be very mindful of what you're eating when you're healing. When you're healing, you probably want to stay away from foods that will contain spices and seasonings, or at least too much of it. This is my opinion because I have heard of different situations where pepper or seasoning of some other variation gets stuck into somebody's wound or where their stitches are still healing, and it's not a good time. So stick to very basic foods that you can tolerate. Maybe add butter for taste and things like that. Mashed potatoes are a great, great way to um, start, as well as soups, broths, Gatorade, a lot of water, um, very soft foods. Again, this is different for everybody from my own perspective and my own experience. That is what I started with, mostly because I did not want to worry about chewing yet. I wanted to just take in food so that I would feel full. So the next thing or some people jump straight into are soft foods such as macaroni and cheese, um, maybe even a soft Salisbury steak or something like that, which is going to be more filling and it's going to allow you time to practice eating without really needing to chew. So you can kind of practice the motion, you can practice the bite force, you can practice the muscle and tongue control, and get a better understanding of how can you sense where your food is in your mouth at any given point in time. So just like in the video where we talk about speech, you want to eat very slowly. Something that I had to learn the hard way is that I do bite my cheek or my lip if I'm excitedly eating. So I have had to slow down on it. I've gotten faster over time. So it's going to be a lot of understanding how to position your tongue and use your cheek and your lips to feel if there's food in the front of your mouth still, if there's food lodged down the side here, that kind of thing. Because with our biological teeth, there's nothing standing between your gums and your teeth or your tongue to the food. The food is felt at any point in time. With dentures, you can no longer tell exactly where your food is right off the, you know, off the spot. So learning to do that and keep in mind Something I also had to learn the hard way is that practicing eating is not everything. The, the most important thing is that you are taking in the necessary nutrients and substance or sustenance to make sure that your body is functioning properly in order to also ensure a proper healing process because if you're not eating, your body's not getting the fuel and energy it needs to continue healing itself. So. And you're also going to feel very cranky if you're hungry. So um, the best advice would be practice chewing when you're not hungry. So if you've already eaten quite a bit of your meal at the time, maybe the last few bites practice and really focus on eating and moving your jaw. 
Um, another thing that goes into play with it is biting into things. Some things that I personally love biting into are McDonald's cheeseburgers. Um, cupcakes are very soft and yummy, and I look forward to those. But I'm not eating those for the sake of filling my stomach. I'm eating them for the enjoyment. So those are a great way to practice as something that's more of a snack and not a meal. Um... And then you start slowly integrating harder, tougher, chewier foods. So I have had my go at some steaks, um, things like that. And for me, that's a little more rare still to this day, mostly because I still have to continue practicing making sure my denture doesn't flip or move when I bite into something and I tear away. So there is all of that. Now when it comes to eating too, is being mindful of the temperature of your food. No one really says it that I know of, but when you go to eat or drink, if you're eating or drinking a very hot or a very cold liquid or anything, your dentures are a very well insulated device. It does not allow you a chance to put food close to your mouth and sense that this is going to be very hot, I need to continue blowing on it. Your lips may get an idea, but you're also not eating with your lips. <laughs> Most of the work goes on behind them. So, another story. I've eaten chicken nuggets. Um, the dino nuggets that you can get in a yellow box from Target are one of my favorite foods to practice tearing, biting into, chewing, they're very soft when you microwave them. I do not bake them. So yes, they are soggy, and that's how I like them. At any rate, I got very excited to eat. I was very hungry at the time. And I popped one of them in my mouth, and I chewed a few times, and I remember swallowing. And it burned all the way down through about the middle of my chest. And my first response was that this does not feel right. I, I wonder if this is what a heart attack feels like or what this could possibly be. And then I realized, oh, I had eaten a very hot food and I was not ready to eat it yet. It still burns. So being mindful of temperature as well. Um, when you are chewing, there are two thought processes to eating. One is chewing on the right side um, or the one side of your mouth versus the other. Another thought process is chew on both sides at the same exact time. So rather than focusing on eating on the one side, you're going to try eating on both. So spreading your food out throughout your mouth is one idea. Personally, I have tried that. It is not for me. It does work for other people, so maybe just after this video or if you're eating while you're watching or listening, try to see what it feels like to eat with both sides or just the one side at a time because it's not the same for every single person. For me, I have always eaten on the right side of my mouth because at one point in time, the left side of my mouth did not have real like teeth. It was a pretty large gap or opening, so there was nothing to chew with. So I've grown accustomed to that. It still mostly holds true. However, I do practice eating with the left side at a time as well and not, you know, just the right. Um, not at the same time, though. I still need my food on one side or the other. I just, for me, it just feels really strange, just like if I were to try to write with my left hand. So I am one of those to chew on both sides, um, one side at a time. With that being said... The basic, basic, basic and first thing that you should be making sure of is that you are keeping up with your soft reline, your hard reline, or the fitting of your denture in general, as well as the adhesive that you're using. If you've been wearing the same adhesive all day long from work and you get home and you're going to attempt to eat dinner, chances are your dentures may slide a little bit. I have eaten at that point in time and I did okay. It's not the most comfortable or ideal situation, but sometimes that's the nature of life. <laughs> so 
just making sure that the last time that you applied an adhesive to your denture was fairly recent, fairly fresh. If you can even get home and then take care of your dentures and your gums first and then eat dinner, um, those kinds of situations are more optimal. If your denture is loose fitting and tends to shift when you try to chew or bite into something, you might want to go get that checked out and make sure that your denture is not ill fitting. Otherwise, tearing, biting away, that kind of stuff is not going to be an easy task. It's again possible depending on the situation, but it is certainly not going to be very comfortable nor enjoyable. Um, some other things as well, having mints at hand are very useful. Um, for me it's almost like practicing the different muscles, movements, um, positions in my mouth that I can move food. Um, I typically like to have mints not only at work but also throughout my house. So I like to keep a little dollar store jar and at the dollar store I buy the little white mints. I do not keep any kind of a gummy kind of mint or anything or gum because they do stick quite a bit to the materials of my denture. I completely steer clear of gum but I do like having mints. It not only makes your bathroom look more upscale and it's nice for your guests to have as well, it's also just something for you. So I do absolutely encourage you having that. Um, with all of that being said, I am aware that this video is quite a bit shorter. Um, if you guys have more ideas or more specific questions around eating with dentures, please let me know. At this point in time, some of my favorite foods to eat are still McDonald's cheeseburgers, the singular ones, because they're easy to bite into, practice eating, and at the same time, they can be pretty filling. Uh, McDonald's french fries tend to be softer and not too crispy, and it does also still have that mixture of crispiness in it as well. So you can try your, your dentures at all of the above. And then also... Um, Another food chain that I've been enjoying quite a bit recently is Raising Cane's. Um, the chicken is very filling. The fries are very filling. The food is delicious. And at the same time, the chicken is just the right amount of crispy to not crispy that you can enjoy the food while practicing eating and hardly really notice that you're even chewing, in my opinion. Um, Salisbury steaks are still one of my favorites, but it's always been my favorite. Um, those are a great way to take in sustenance, have a version of a steak that allows you to enjoy it and eat, um, and that kind of stuff. So if you like videos like this one, please go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more videos from me in the future, go ahead and subscribe, and I will talk to you later.